Cutters, the grassy, unpopular opinions. Hey there, hello there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Dub and welcome you to another Degrassi Unpopular Opinion. And this one is basically, it was supposed to be a poll thing. That I would say who had the best progression and the best progression and then rank them from 1 to 10 in the whole um, thing. I could probably do that and then just say that whose character had the best progression and regression of all time and then rank up there. But yeah, I'll probably do that. I'll probably do that like Thursday. For context, it's being taped on October 24th, 2021. So yeah. So anyway, um, I did a post eight days ago called Who in Your Mind Had the Best Progression and Regression in Each of the Three Eras? And of course, I call it the Emma era is from one to seven before Emma graduated. The Claire era from eight to 14, that Claire was basically there for the whole thing. And then the Maya era from Seasons 15 to 18, a.k.a. Next Class 1 to 4. So I basically said in the new, in the next gen, in the Emma era, the progression at Spinner, Toby is the most progressive, the progression of characters with Toby with Emma close second. The Claire era, I had Holly J at the best progression with Dave probably regressed. And the next class thing had the best progression, Zoe, and probably regression, Tristan. Um, only four people managed to talk about it. Um, one person said, I hadn't thought about the two later errors, but I think Craig had progression and regression. So basically, Craig was up and down, up and down, up and down. Like he would progress and then he would regress. So yeah, Craig is basically the yo-yo. Somebody said, I agree about Spitter having the best progression. There's a lot of regression. Toby, Emma, Paige. Although, if you count Degrassi Goes Hollywood, well, Hazel, Ellie, and Marco got less interesting with Paige. Basically, Bummer Times also said Holly J and Ollie for best progression and Claire for regression. And Maya had the best progression with Tristan being the worst regression in that era. And then you got someone saying, Spinner, Fiona, and Maya having the best progressions of the, in the three eras and the regressions were Hazel, Dave, Tristan. And K.H. Meniel said that it would be Manny, Fiona, and Maya for progression. Regression would be Ellie, Drew, and Frankie. So, yeah, there's a lot of characters to go over. Looking at it, looking at it, it's that, well, the unpopular opinion is my picks. I'll just say that my picks, you know, progression is spinner. Although people have said that Manny had the best progression in junior and Degrassi next gen. I say possibly, but I don't think Manny really hit a, a low patch, except for the fact that her parents kicked her out because she would, she wanted to be an actress more than just being under her dad's um, wing, if you will. I mean, his dad, I mean, Manny's dad did soften up, but I think he just wanted to force Manny to play by his way. And after, and he absolutely gets his wife to, to cower in his presence. So, yes, I would say Manny, in a sense, progression from her lowest point was season five. But, you know, it's progression throughout from one to whatever, one to seven. I think that Spitter had a better progression. My thinking is that Spitter's progression was huge because, after all, he was seen as a bully and a class clown, and, you know, he was aggravating, to say the least. At his lowest point, obviously, there were some low points. Season three, he had gay bashed Marco, although Marco and Jimmy managed to get him on their side, and, Mark, and Spitter finally, after understanding and time, he actually realized he needs to help Marco out. He even spends time trying to get Marco to be with Dylan or some other guy. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. But his lowest point was season four. I mean, around the time of the whole time stand still situation that he and Jay managed to get Rick's hopes up and bully him and all that, he actually was crushing on Manny while still with Paige. It's like, what the fuck, Spinner? However, how freaking ever there is a thing. 
like, you know, Spitter was bullying Rick. Rick came back to the school and he should not have. Now a lot of people said, did Spitter have anything to do with this whole Rick and Ter Terry situation? Yes. Because if you remember in the episode Dull Dream is Over in Season 3, that he basically went with Paige to try to find where Terry and Rick are. Because Terry went at, right after Rick after Paige scared Rick off. And then that's when Rick has the blood in his hands and then he runs away from Paige and Spinner. They go, they go to make chase, but then they realize they have to help Terry out. Spinner, of course, has the feelings he should have known about this and should have kept Terry under protection, but that would have aggravated Rick even more. Spinner wants to beat up on Rick, but his mom, Rick's mom prevents that from happening, and Spinner thinks that he's a monster like Rick. But in the end, yeah, like, you know, Spinner had the right, was doing it for all the right reasons. Rick wasn't leaving anywhere. Spinner and Jimmy dump Rick into a dumpster. And basically, yeah, Rick was persona non grata. Rick came back and retaliated with the spray paint, which made Spitter, Jay, and Alex as the only three key bullies to go after him with the paint and feathers prank during the competition. It still, it still gets me. It's like, you know, how did they know that Rick was going to do a tiebreaker and all that? What if the competition was over when if Degrassi had won and all that, or even if they lost, it's like, there's a wasted opportunity, although they could probably paint and feather him later. But yeah, they never, the writers never talk about this. It seems like a little bit of a hitch is that, you know, the paint and feathers thing. And we didn't see it set up until just before the tiebreaker. So they didn't set it up beforehand. I just wonder if it didn't go to a tiebreaker, what would have happened to the whole thing? It would have been all for naught. So, yeah, so Spitter's prog progression was huge. Well, Spitter was the main bully, and he and Jay, let's not forget, Spitter and Jay didn't get Rick's hopes up once. They got it up twice. They told them to do the tiebreaker so that they easily can put the paint and feathers on and win or lose. And then Spinner and Jay tricked Rick into shooting Jimmy. Although they didn't know Rick had a gun. And Spitter wanted to go to the cops. He had instant guilt. And it took till Jimmy leaving, coming back to Degrassi, three months for Spinner to finally uh, spill the beans and all that. It was obvious why he didn't want to visit Rick and the, Jimmy in the hospital because he was scared he was going to let it slip out. And, you know, Jimmy got some flack for telling him all this stuff. But Spitter had to because if Spitter didn't and the police found out, there would have been a whole lot of shit going down. I tells you that. So yeah, so I think Spinner had the best progression. I mean, Manny too, but Spinner had to have had the best one. Regression, a lot of people said Hazel, El, Hazel and Ellie, Hazel, Ellie, and all that. But yeah, a lot of regression. Hazel was regressed. Hazel, I don't think was a prominent character in the first place. She was basically a background character for Paige's click. I mean, this whole Somalian thing about her hiding her Somalian heritage for Jamaican heritage was just bad. And it gave her the top plot line, which was nice. But then I guess she kind of regressed in a sense after Jimmy had eyes on Ellie. Ellie regressed because, you know, she was just a goth girl at first. And then she had cut herself. And then, you know, she was with Sean. She had some decent storylines dealing with her mom's things. I mean, she I guess she got regressed to the background, if you will. But I think Toby got more regression. Not just once, but twice. So let me explain. Toby was a, ma a main player in season one. He and Ashley almost stole the spotlight away from Emma as being the main protagonist. So Toby basically was good. Season two, he gets a girlfriend, Kendra, who he has eyes on. But it's kind of stalkerish and clingy towards Kendra. Mostly because Toby doesn't want to lose the only girl that might have interest in him. And Toby's just trying to make it work. And Kendra says, we can make it work, but don't get too ahead of yourself. So basically, once Toby season two thing happens, season three, what happens to him? JT leaves for a better crowd. Toby tries to get Jimmy's friendship by trying to hack Jimmy's grades with a computer and fails. Toby in season three just lost it. And Kendra got blackholed. It's probably from some CTV executive if you will. 
So let's just think about it. So Toby was on the outs in a sense. Season four, he was still in the outs. JT was hanging around Danny, a.k.a. Liberty's brother. Possibly some movement about it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, Toby and Rick end up being friends. Maybe Toby was pitting Rick as a friend. I don't know. But after the whole incident that Toby saw Rick and Sean fight for the gun and Sean accidentally shoot Rick and kill him, Toby was upset. JT and Danny basically rip him for being to Rick's friends in the first place. Manny thankfully chews out JT and JT apologizes to Toby. And, you know, Toby and JT are back being friends. Season 5, you know, JT has his own problems with Liberty's pregnancy and I think Toby tries to help in a sense, but Toby didn't really do much in Season 5, as far as I know. Season 6, Toby was still with JT and then he inadvertently caused JT to go outside looking for Liberty, which saw Drake Lampley shoot, I mean, stab JT to death with a, with a knife in the aorta. I think Toby was upset at himself. I think he had strong feelings that he may have caused JT's death. But I mean, how do, did he know that Lakehurst was going to come in and stab JT in the aorta? I think Toby felt guilt. He wanted to be with Liberty. It was probably out of guilt and all that. But Toby knew he couldn't screw over his dead friend and tells Liberty that JT wanted to be with Liberty, not Mia. I think JT wanted to end this rivalry and go with Liberty and then, you know, stop seeing Mia and then maybe Lakers will leave him alone. I think they should have. Of course, Toby gets put on the back burner and all that. He, They didn't talk about his PTSD from... Properly from the JT and the Rick situations. I mean, he didn't have a lot. He got put in the background. He was, of course, upset in season seven that Lake Chris was moving in because they killed JT. But he soon realizes that he just can't move on and all. I mean, he can't just push back stuff. So in the middle class, you I would say Holly J. Well, people say Holly J and Ali for best progression. I say... What did I say? I said Holly J too. Yeah. I mean, one said Ali, one said Fiona. A couple of them said Fiona. I think Fiona, in a sense, had a good progression. I mean, she was basically seen as someone who had a drinking problem after her boyfriend abused her. Fiona actually kisses Declan to prevent Declan from being with Holly J. I think, and it was found out that Fiona was worried that she was going to lose Declan as a as a soulmate, as a twin for Holly J. Fiona hated Holly J. And then Fiona turns gay for some reason. It's just like, it just came out of the ballpark. It's like, there was no re real lead up to why Fiona turned gay and all that. It's kind of like Paige in season four. We never saw any lead up to Paige having feelings for Alex before season five. But yeah, I think she was, she was fine. She was getting her life back together. And she even had a crush on Holly J, but she couldn't bear telling Holly J. I think she just didn't want to tell Holly J. And yeah, Holly J had, I mean, Allie had a good progression too. I mean, she was basically seen as a terrible person and all that. She runs away from home after her parents won't believe anything she says. Although she's trying to be honest and all that. And then Johnny DeMarco tells her not to run away from her problems. So she and her family get therapy. Allie is much better. I mean, why did she protect Leo? That's a pathetic thing. Ali could have went to jail for that. She should have, but anyway. Yeah, Ali turned herself a lot around. I get it. But I think Holly J had the best progression in that era. Reason why is because Holly J in season seven was this Lakers bitch who put pressure on a lot of former Lakers students and other Lakers students that went to go to Durbassi. She was basically just a bit of a bossy bitch. And the worst of all is her treatment of Anya. Basically, I think Holly J needed Anya more so than Anya needed Holly J because Holly J was well hated and Anya seemed to be the only way. Maybe it was a, maybe Anya probably thought it was a homosexual relationship with Holly J. No, Anya liked Sav. Holly J liked Sav later on. But I think Holly J finally got her bossy ways taken out. I think. Someone said that someone actually took a shot and nearly shot Holly J at the dot. And that's when Holly J realized that she needed to be a better person. 
And she was. She ended up being a better person by season 10 or 11. Well, season 10, she tried to get Anya to ruin Sass' chances at student council president, which failed miserably. And then Holly J realized that she couldn't be a bitch to Anya because Anya was breaking away from her. So she tries to be with Declan. She tries to be, well, Declan tries to buy Holly J off in a sense because Holly J's family lost money. But Holly J had to be humble. Although Holly J would be a, a, a type and of course end up getting um, a kidney problem from strep throat she ignored. Found out, she finds out she's adopted and her birth mother actually wants $2,000 in exchange for the kidney. It's illegal. And Holly J said, well, it's illegal. Why do you want $2,000? And the mother said, because she has to recover from losing the kidney and she's got two kids. What is she going to do to support them? Thankfully, Fiona steps in, I think in a way to get Holly J to notice her and then basically buys Holly J's mom's dress for $2,000 and poof, Holly J's got the money for the kidney. Kind of stupid, don't you think? And then people said, oh, Claire had re re regression or even Drew. In a sense, Drew may have had a regression, but a lot of Drew's things was because his mother basically was Mama Bear or Karen in a sense. That, you know, she basically forced herself, her fuse on Simpson, protecting Drew and just getting mad at Simpson for not protecting Drew from hazing and all that. She just basically protected Drew and got Simpson to overreact, in a sense. I mean, she did progress better. I mean, she was a little transphobic. But I think, in a way, she was trying to make sure Adam dressed as Gracie to please her mother, to please her parents. I mean, she was under immense pressure, too. But she finally admitted her things. But, yeah. I think Dave, in a sense, because, you know, the writers had a good thing with Dave, but they just left him high and dry. And the worst part is Jamil French died this year. So, yeah. I mean, somebody even said Claire for regression. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. But they, the writers just threw a lot of stuff at Claire. They just wanted to see if she could swim with it. And in the last part, I put the highest progression was Zoe with Tristan. Now... Everyone said Maya and everyone said Tristan. Maya for positive, Tristan for negative. I could see that for Maya in a sense. But, I mean, Zoe came off a season 14 that she was very lucky to survive the Degrassi nude scandal. And then she turned her life around. Well, she had a she had a crush on Grace, but Grace was straight. And then she had a crush on Rasha. And Zoe was trying to prove that she could be great as a... As a is a gay, as a lesbian woman. Unfortunately, the whole homophobia problems with the TV and radio and acting gigs. Like, so he didn't get acting gigs because they were homophobic. Probably thinking that they were getting in trouble for propose, putting a gay person in stuff. It wasn't Zoe's fault. It was just the narrow-mindedness of people. But Maya's, but Zoe's mom basically kicked her out because she wasn't getting roles. Now you could also argue that Zoe's mom was was upset because you know being Catholic religion and they don't really trust the LGBTQ plus movement. A lot of religions don't. Just saying, especially Muslims, because they stone the gay people to death allegedly. But anyhow, I feel that Zoe had a great progression. I mean, what? What bad things did Zoe do after the grassy nudes? She didn't really do anything that was controversial. You know, she came out of the closet, but that was a positive step for her. And, you know, she burned the letter her mom gave her, saying that I don't need her acceptance. I can be who I want to be with my family, you know, the other graduates. Like, yeah, I say so. Maya had her fair share of issues, progression. I mean, Season 15 and 16 wasn't really Maya's years. But then once she had the bus crash and then she, you know, had the suicidal thoughts that plagued out in season three of Next Class. And then season four, she was recovering after realizing all this stuff. I think her recovery from her depression and all that. Although I would have loved for Maya to admit that Cam's got into her head. Because that's the best way and people will probably stop hating on her. 
But of course, everyone knows the biggest regression was Tristan. And I agree full heartedly. So anyway, yeah, I think Tristan had the best, the biggest regression. I mean, he regressed kind of near the end of the Claire era from seasons 11 onwards, but he was just a little biphobic. I mean, I don't, I don't condone him. Like, I know why he was upset with Miles, because, you know, he was worried that Miles would get rid of Tristan for a girl and didn't like Miles being bisexual. I mean, that's understandable. But Tristan just wanted to be with Miles. You know, they had their issues. I mean, Tristan and Miles went their separate ways because Tristan said he didn't want to hold Miles back. Well, I guess that's a little bit of progression for Tristan. He finally learns that Miles can make his own decisions and all that. But yeah, he was kind of a dick. But I think he was more of a dick near near the Claire era, more so than the next class era. Although it must be said that in the Throwback Thursday thing, as he was doing council president and he was trying to deny acts that were controversial because of the whole banquet for the alumni. I personally think that Tristan may have, well, half of it was Tristan trying to please Holly J with the fact that he's modeling his presidency after her presidency from season, from season eight. And also that it's possible that Simpson may have had a hand in forcing Tristan's hand behind everything. So yeah, I think Tristan, in a sense, just got himself off on the wrong foot. I mean, he did make the right decision afterwards, saying that we need to talk. So good for him that he at least recognized his own problems. So what's there to talk about? So anyway, those are the best progression and regression storylines. The unpopular opinion is but my, my views are correct and some of them are wrong. But I'm just giving you the clear difference. So to summarize, I have progression, spinner, Holly J and Zoe from the three eras and the regression is Emma, Dave, and Tristan. And I know some of you didn't agree on that, but you know, that's okay. That's why it's kind of an unpopular opinion. So anyway, I'll probably be setting up a poll about that later on. We'll see about it. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.